Welcome to Coral Island, the newest cozy farming simulator game on the block. Now, if you're a fan of games like Story of Seasons, Stardew Valley, Harvest Moon, then you will probably enjoy this game. My name is Kang and welcome to my channel. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and click that bell icon so you can see when we upload new content and when we live stream, which is pretty much every single day. Now, without further ado, I'm going to hop into an overview in the game and I'm going to let you know, is this game actually good? Let's go. Now, Coral Island starts you off by making your own character. So yes, there is a character customizer. There are a few different body types and some default skin tones, which you can further customize if you would like. But here's where I kind of struggled a little bit. I struggled to make a character that actually looked like me, and you'll see why in just a moment. But thankfully, the developers of Coral Island are aware of that, and there are some new customizations coming very soon, very soon in the next update, I do believe. But as you go through the character customizer, you'll see that there are only about four different options for each part of your face, such as the eyebrows, eyes, nose, lips, and jaw. Now, going from there is going to be, it may be difficult for you to actually get a character that looks like you. And I know it was for me, especially, especially as we get further into the customizer, such as the hair. The hair is some of the most limited part of the customizer. Now, for me, all I have is a little fade. I have a fade. <laughs> and there's no fade options there's no like really short haircut there's not even a bald option in the game uh so i <laughs> the hair was definitely a struggle which is kind of interesting because the, some of the characters in the game the npcs the townies in the game they actually do have different different uh varying hairstyles but your character does not there are also no beards in the game so i have a beard myself you cannot have a beard on your character and again some of the townies in the game also have beer so it's, it's, it's kind of strange but hopefully they will resolve that issue very soon now once you're done making your character or trying to make a character that looks as close to you as possible you're introduced to the game and i gotta say this game looks very beautiful you are coming from a fictional town called pokio and you're heading to the coral island now the typical thing happens in the beginning of games like this you're introduced to like the mayor or the representative of the of the city of the town of the island and you're given the grand tour eventually you're led over to your house where you will be staying and you also are introduced to your farm and now there's a cool little cute little cut scene that happens with the farm i won't ruin it right now in this video but you will see it if you play the game as actually i was taken by i was taken by surprise myself once you're introduced to your house and your farm, it's pretty much free reign. You need to go around your farm and try to clean up a little bit so you can start planting your seeds. This is a farming simulator. <laughs> so you need to clean up a little bit and plant your seeds. Uh, now, planting and harvesting in this game is pretty simple. I'll show you in a second, uh, but you got to get through all this stuff first. Look how messy this is. Your house inside your house is pretty messy as well. Now that we have some land clear, all you have to do is take your hoe and then start laying down your seeds and water. All you have to do is click. Now this game, speaking of clicking, this game does not have controller support just yet. And I know some people are, are kind of taken aback by that because they, they, like to they like to play these kind of games with controllers. Uh, hopefully they'll add that feature in pretty soon uh, because... You know, I probably would like to play with a controller as well. You know, just sit back and relax a little bit and play with your controller. But put down your seeds, just click, click, click. You don't even have to really move that much. You just click and then you can also water the same exact way. Pretty simple. Now, a huge part of the beginning of this game is just going to be you running around the map trying to explore and see what all there is to see. And I got to tell you, this map is huge. Here's your house in the game, and this is the entire map of Coral Island. This map is pretty huge. It's so huge that you'll probably spend your first few days in the game just walking around the entire map trying to see everything. And there's a lot of stuff to see. There were so many instances where I was like, what is this? Why is this here? This looks very mysterious. Hopefully they'll tell me more about this later in the game, which they probably will. So enjoy it because the map is beautiful. There are so many details and so many intricacies around the map that you're going to be awestruck. Trust me. As you continue to explore the island for the first time, you start to run into the many, many numerous townies. The first one that I met was Everest or Eva, as she likes to be called. But there are so many ranging from all different types of backgrounds, different ages, different genders. Uh, so you will start to meet them and you'll start to pick out who your favorites are. Uh, trust me. 
And since we're here inside of Sam's shop, so I can tell you that not only do the outdoor environments look really good, but the indoor environments look really, really fantastic and well detailed. I was walking into a bunch of people's houses and I was surprised every single time that I walked into a house about how beautiful they look. They really, the developers really put a lot of, uh, a lot of detail and a lot of work and effort into making sure every house was unique and every house was fully decked out with so many different things to look at and explore the characters personalities. In addition to discovering things around the map, which you're going to be doing a whole bunch of, there's also other features of the game, including a cavern, which you will unlock later, which will grant you the ability to fight monsters and mine. And I'm sure there's other secrets hidden down there as well as you continue to progress. Eventually, you will unlock the ability to fish in this game. And fishing is a little tricky. It threw me off in the beginning. All you have to do, though, is throw out your line. There's a number to show you how far your line is going to go. And then you have to wait. You have to wait until you see a fish appear. You will not see fish just swimming in the water. You won't see shadows. You have to just sit there and wait and wait and wait and do some more waiting until eventually you see that you're still waiting. <laughs> you're going to keep waiting until you see a shadow appear. And that is your fish, my friend. That is my that is your fish, my friends. We're still waiting. So don't get impatient. Because you may be sitting here waiting for a while like we're doing right now. Finally, we have a fish. So when the fish actually bites your line, you'll see an indicator and you have to reel the fish in. So you have to make sure that you don't stretch your line out so that it breaks. So when you see the lines, those little wiggly lines going crazy, ease off a little bit. And then you catch the fish. I caught a shrimp. We caught a fish. We caught a, a shrimp. Uh, so that's how fishing works. Uh, it's pretty simple, but it does require some patience. There's also bug catching in the game, which requires you to sneak up on the bugs and time it correctly. Here, I'll show you. So there's a bug over here. You can't see it yet because I'm in the way. But as you get closer, you can see that there's this exclamation mark. You got to get close to them. You got to get close to them before they catch on to you and fly away. I didn't do it there, but I'm going to try again as soon as I see another bug. Um, and like I mentioned before, you can keep track of all the bugs in the fish that you catch in the game with your handy dandy journal. Uh, there is a museum, which I'm going to show you also in just a second. So I'm going to try to sneak up on this guy here. I'm going to go in from the, oh, he's really, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. He's really, oh my, okay. So <laughs> as you can see, bug catching can be a little tricky, but essentially you got to try to sneak up on them. And once you get close enough to them, they will turn green. And that lets you know, you can let go of your mouse button and you will go ahead and catch them. But you have, they have to be within this blue little indicator here and they will turn green and then you can catch them. It can be a little tricky. It can be a little tricky. Oh, here's another one. Let's find out. Nope. <laughs> Coral Island also has a museum, which is pretty cool. The museum looks nice over on the sides here. You see the aquarium where all the fish will be. And in the middle, you have the bug sanctuary. Donating is super easy. All you have to do is click here and then you can actually donate more than one thing at a time, which is super convenient. Now, the museum curator, I believe his name is Sam. I do believe his name is Sam. He said when you donate things, you will be rewarded. I have not been rewarded yet and, I, and I've donated quite a few things. I'm still waiting on my reward, Sam. I hope you didn't lie to me. But anyway, as you fill out the, uh, the museum, you can actually see the things here. And so it's pretty cool. There's some more space back here. I'm not really sure what it's for. It may be for fossils. They may be in the game as well, but there's some more area back here too. museum. Actually pretty, pretty cool. The game also includes a journal where you can keep track of all your progress in the game. You can keep track of all the crops you produce and the animal products you've gathered. You can keep track of the fish you've caught, the insects and the sea critters. You can also keep track of the artifacts, gems and fossils and scavengeables you have found and also notes in the game, such as mail and things that pop up useful tips. So it's pretty useful. There's also an eclectic group of townies in the game, as they're called from all different backgrounds, genders and ages. Some of them are married, but some of them are single and you have the ability to romance them and marry them, I do believe. So if some of these catch your eye, then you can kind of spark it up. You can give them gifts to increase your relationship. And also on this little screen here, if you click on them, you can see their character model. You can see what they like. You can see what they love and they have different outfits. Apparently now I'm still in spring in the game. So, but there are spring, summer, winter, fall outfits, and you can unlock different expressions 
for them as well as you can see right here. That's a pretty cool feature. So before I wrap up this overview, I want to go over a few other features of the game. So like with most other farming similars, you're going to be making money by farming. Once your crops have grown and you harvest them, you can plant them, you can put them in this little box over here and they'll ship out every single day and you'll make some money. Also every day, based on the things you did the previous day, you'll earn skill points and you can use these skill points to gain mastery. For example, this farming skill right here allows my crops to stay water at a 10% chance. There's all kinds of different masteries and as you continue to do things in the game, those will come up. The story in this game is pretty interesting so far. Um, I haven't gotten too deep into it, but apparently there is this company called Pufferfish, which is trying to turn this entire island into a oil drilling operation. <laughs> so you're going to have to navigate through that story and see how it kind of unfolds. Uh, it's kind of similar to Stardew Valley in that regard. The game is really awesome. I love the rain effects, you know, when it's raining like right now, how different things look, uh, the rain, the reflections, how the wood looks when it's raining, as you can see right here over in this house. The game is just magnificent looking. Uh, so I'm really excited to kind of play more of the game. If you want to see more of this game, then be sure to let me know. We are just getting started. We're, we're just getting started. We're in the beginning of, of things. So we haven't really gotten too deep. There's so much more to see and explore. And to answer the question from the beginning of this video, is this game good? Yes, the game is good. <laughs> the game is in early access. So not all of the features that are that are planned are in the game yet, but they're going to be updating the game as things progress. There's already seasons. There's different crops. There's different events. There's romances, all that fun stuff. So you have a lot to do, even though the game is in early access. So check it out. Anyway, this is Kang. Again, subscribe if you like the content. Click that bell icon, and I will see you in the next video or live stream. Take care, everyone. Bye.